Oh, it's, it's quite warm. It's, <laughs> it's 1937, and at pharmaceutical giant IG Farben, the challenge falls to a young scientist called Otto Bayer. He's really interested in this problem of can we make a new synthetic rubber? And one day he added two chemicals together. What we now know is that one of those chemicals had a bit of contaminant in it, which he didn't realize. Oh. Mm. And that contaminant actually made it a big bubbly foamy mess. Ooh. And he showed it to some colleagues and they said, Otto, <laughs> we don't need a Swiss cheese. <laughs> Oh, we need God. some rubber. <laughs> and so a lot of his colleagues were doubting him. But he believed in his bones, and so he continued to work on them. In honour of Bayer's tenacity... Do I need to worry about my own kitchen here? Not at this stage. OK. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to recreate his accidental discovery of what today is called polyurethane foam. How much am I putting in? 35 millilitres. OK. Our ingredients are two different liquids that individually don't do much. What we're going to do is pour both of these at the same time into that beaker. OK. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. But when combined... Very good. OK. Now you can stir, stir, stir. OK. It is a different story. Ooh, it's getting bubbly. Right, so you can see it bubbling straight away. Yeah. What, are we putting in that one? Yeah. It's is that how big it's going to go? Yeah. All right. Sorry, yeah. Pour it. <laughs> OK, I don't believe you. Oh, hang on, it's growing. <gasps> da, da, da. Oh, my goodness. It looks like when you've over-poured a beer. Molecules in the two liquids are linking together into long, stringy polymer chains that can build a solid. And it is a bubbly one because in the process, a gas is also released. OK, I have a strong feeling this is going to go over the top. <laughs> Here it goes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Shall I catch it? Yeah, go on. Oh, it's, it's like, quite warm. It's, <laughs> it's like something's being burnt. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! OK, that is the weirdest thing. <laughs> Weird indeed. And at first, not even Bayer quite knew what to do with it. I have to be honest with you, I'm just imagining that day in the lab when he's, like, <laughs> pulling out the streams of the stuff. <laughs> like, his colleagues, look, it's a new invention. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fair enough they weren't that impressed. It is. Just a couple of years later, war broke out, and the company IG Farben became a central participant in the Nazi killing machine. It would be another 10 years long after the war that the potential of Otto's discovery would be realised. Science presents a new synthetic sensation. It's the world's lightest solid. In the early 1950s, polyurethane foam took off. An insulating material for houses, refrigerators and airplanes. With tweaks to the recipe, it could be mass manufactured. This machine produces polyurethane foam. In a soft and squishy form for home furnishings, or light and rigid enough to hit the surf. Clamped on either side are blocks of stiff polyurethane foam. Its insulation powers were so good that it even took us to the moon. As the cooling industry boomed, it would become the only choice for fridge insulation. 